what would you say for people who think that Iraq is not safe? Yeah, but when they're coming here and see uh, Iraq, they know that's uh, here <laughs> security. Yeah. yeah, just before some years, for some but months, is, yes, yeah. but, but now, now it's completely fine. yes. Is Iraq safe or not? It's getting there. Yeah. It's, it's, it's way better than before. We had our rough days. It's been uh, a, a war zone for, for a while. So getting out of there is, is kind of hard, but we are actually uh, into uh, getting into a, a, a whole country, a better country. What would you say to people saying that uh, Iraq is not safe? <clears throat> not correct. Let's talk about Iraq. 20 years ago. We have no ambition in Iraq. Deadline for Saddam Hussein to leave Iraq. The safety of America depends on the outcome of the battle in the streets of Baghdad. Saddam was threatening the U.S. with weapons of mass destruction? Yes. Nuclear weapon. Nuclear weapon? That's news to me, I'm sorry. That turned out not to be true. No chemical, nuclear, or biological weapons. A rebellion against U.S. occupation. The Shias who had taken over the government began oppressing the Sunnis. Iraq became fertile territory for the Americans' greater enemy. They didn't just want to kick America out, they wanted to set up an Islamic state. Prime Minister came to Mosul to declare the city liberated. Welcome to Iran. Very safe. We'd like to show you our culture, our... Today I got a little bit uh, sick, I had food poisoning. Yesterday I was on fire trying all the sweets on the street. Literally vomited everything. <laughs> they were delicious, but uh, I don't know. My stomach couldn't digest some of those ones. But anyway, I feel better now, so let's go. Escorting us. Highly militarized zone, very, very close to the borders. There's just settlements and villages all the way to the border, which is probably 200 kilometers to Saudi or something similar to Syria. Anyone can try to do something not right. So, yeah, they're just trying to protect this place, that's all. Uh, it's literally a massive fortress in the middle of nowhere. I mean, this is bigger than I ever expected. Feels surreal. So let me show you something. This note here is 5,000 dinars. What you have here, this castle, or this fortress, is exactly this part. So still not feeling 100%, so I'm gonna have chai, which is the local tea. It's one of the best things here in Iraq, the chai, the tea. We are in Karbala. We passed all checkpoints here. We're going soon to see the mosque, but I need to go first to the hotel, drop the stuff, because I cannot enter with this camera. So we are getting in the shrine. This place is very, very special, really important. After Mecca and Medina, the shrines of Nacha and Karbala are the holiest sites in the Shia Islam. Millions of people come here every year, like a big pilgrimage. Bye. This is actually very, very good, very, very tasty, but because of this I got sick yesterday. I got food poisoning. So I think I'm gonna try these ones for a while. Here they make the dough. He's kind of handing the rolls to this guy over here. And then they put it in this oven. It's like sort of a lavash. It's like lavash, right? And I love because this guy is so fast. He even has time to watch some uh, Netflix or YouTube or whatever. You're welcome to the era. Messi. 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 
And you? Thank you guys, see you. Wrapping up the day, Najaf and Karbala have been truly incredible places. Very spiritual, you feel the energy when you're here. Uh, and yeah, anyway, tomorrow we have really, really, really packed day. We're going to a different town and we'll try to engage with more people, see what they do and try to understand more about Iraq. We are driving to a place towards the south, if I'm not wrong, it's called Uruk. We're gonna see a historical site and then after that we'll continue our journey to another place called Nasiria. We're gonna sleep there overnight there and explore the city by night. By the way, this is something very common that you will see in Iraq as well. Shisha. I don't even know if the local name is Shisha here. But you will see this in many, many, many restaurants, cafes. Whenever we come to these places in Iraq, rice, chai, tea, and then... Yeah, I'm ready to go. We're in this historical site of Ur. This is a temple for worship. What would you say? for people who think that Iraq is not safe. Yeah, but when they're coming here and see uh, Iraq, they know that's uh, here <laughs> security. Yeah. yeah, just before some years, for some but months, reason, yes, but, yeah. but, but now, now it's completely fine. yes. Thanks for your coming yeah. to see our civilization. I mean our civilization for all of us. Everywhere you go, you have people trying to approach you, a few words in English to make you feel more comfortable. And also they like to practice English as well. That shows again the, the hospitality and friendliness of people around. Welcome to Iraq. This is the kitchen, this is where everything, everything is done. Let's have a look. They, they get the head fully cleaned and everything from this, the market. Like they don't clean it themselves. And then they get it and they put it in this really large pot, okay? They get all the hairs out, they get all of that and they put it inside. Four hours to five hours inside of this to let it fully, fully cook and say, uh, and then you can take it out and take the parts and sell it. You're gonna see it in a bit. We're gonna eat it. Now you know the whole process of making the special food that everyone likes in Iraq. Okay. And you're grabbing now brain. Yes. The brain sandwich. And we show you what they eat here, the sandwich with the brain and all that. One little detail, so you don't really find women here. Women prefer going to more refined places. That's what they told me once in Saudi. I don't know if it's the same here or not. But yeah, you don't really see women in this kind of place. We need to really wake up early. We're going to a very special place tomorrow to see the sunrise. Alright, so it's 4.30 a.m. I only slept three hours because we're going to this place called the marshes to see sunrise. I heard this is beautiful and have breakfast in a mud brick house with a local family. He is from Nasiriya here in the marshes. How was life growing up here? Back in the 70s and 80s, here was much better. There was a lot of water, um, much, more, much more water than what used to be right now. In the 1993, uh, these areas were dr droughted, I mean. Water was redirected from them. He, among a lot of people, they were displaced from here uh, to other places. For him, he went to, to close to Baghdad, down to the south of it, by 30 kilometers. <laughs> 2002, after the U.S. invasion, most of the people went back to their original place. So the people that were working as fishermen, the people that were working as hunters, or the ones that just raised the cattle. He moved, obviously, to, to a town, to a city, and this is very different to the way he grew up. Like, uh, is he missing this kind of life more? He hasn't changed a lot for himself. Between the city life and the marshes, after all, the city is just beside the marshes. He comes and goes. But because of the water level, especially, it has gone down. They're suffering more. They're having less food. They're having less tourism and all of that. My last question, what would he say to people uh, saying that uh, Iraq is not safe? <coughs> not correct. Uh, we give hospitalities, we welcome people who are coming here, so just please do come.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Every day I'm in Iraq, I'm discovering something new. Every day I think I've seen it all. I know the following day is surprising me even more. I don't even know how to explain the people, the places that we visit. It really feels surreal. Make your own conclusions. <laughs> The chef. <laughs> Thank you very much for your hospitality. Yeah? Thank you very much. Welcome to Iraq. Welcome to Iraq. You can imagine every place that you go, they come to you, they talk to you, they want a picture, and then they say goodbye. Six to seven hours drive back to Baghdad, gathering some snacks and see how it goes. Hello, how are you? What's your name? Sajjad. Sajjad, are you from here, from Iraq? Yes. Yeah? Are you, are you doing the pilgrimage today? Walking with the people? Yes. Today? Yes, yes. Yeah? Yes. Nice. Nice. All right. Cool. Good morning. <laughs> Thanks, man. Nice to meet you. What is this? Potato <laughs> potatoes? <laughs> I'm following you. Thank you so much. I, I, I ate already, but thank you so much. All right, so we keep walking here the streets. <laughs> it's like everyone is trying to show me uh, their little their little shop or something, which is pretty cool, you know. Uh, it's good stuff here. Habibi, Habibi, Habibi. So Habibi is like love, means like love, like darling. Habibi, Habibi, Habibi. <laughs> and now they wanna, so they're offering free water, tea, and stuff. Argentina. Where are you from Iraq? Yeah, nice one. So yeah, you can see the vibe is spectacular here. People are very peaceful. They just want to talk to you. Anyway, now I, I cannot film too much. There's kind of a police in this part. I cannot film the police, so I will, I will put the camera down. Police, you can see they are still very, very good. Like they hardly check me. Always very, very respectful. I was looking for this for the whole trip. Free falafel right now. They are preparing it at the moment. Ahmed. Ahmed. Sabir. Nice to meet you. All from Iraq. Okay. Iraq. Yeah. Iraq. Yeah. Iraq. Yeah. Nice, Iraq. nice. Nice. But you have a very beautiful country. As you can see, meeting people on the street. Hello. Everyone. Hello. How are you? Your name? Ale. What's your name? Uh, Yasim. 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 Are you from here, from Iraq? Uh, Iraq. Yeah. And uh, Iraq. Ah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so he's saying essentially he doesn't speak English, only Arabic. There's a famous video where they took Saddam statue down. It's exactly in this place here. Let me show you. Welcome to Iraq! Welcome to Iraq! Are you all from Iraq? Yes, yes, yes! yes. yes. How are you? My, my yeah. father, my mother. Yeah. In Mexico. <laughs> in, in, in Mexico? Yes, yes. yes. Hello, nice. Mexico. All right, guys. Do you... I love you. Hola, Omar. I speak English, they speak Arabic. But the way that we understand each other is when we took our photo. Argentina, Messi, very good. Do you feel this place is unsafe? Very long day today. We started the day in the marshes to see the sunrise. We spent time there, had breakfast with local people, lunch as well. Uh, then we had a very long drive back to Baghdad, like six hours or so, with the checkpoints. And finally, I'm very happy that we managed to come to this place, the pilgrimage and see how people do their procession, uh, how they pay respect uh, to the Iman and the generosity of the people on the street, right? Like uh, saying hi to you, offering you free food, free drinks. Uh, yeah, next level. So good morning. Today is the day for Samara. So we are heading now. So this is the best restaurant in Fallujah. People here eat meat, chicken. The kebab is very, very popular. They sell long queue to get in, but apparently it's worth doing it. We got access to the kitchen here. So this is the famous shawarma in the city of Fallujah. Everyone comes here. 
for this iconic thing. It's 130 kilograms. And this is enough for a day probably, right? Well, no, this is not enough for a day. They, they change it? Yeah, of course. Okay, just finished lunch in this place, had my chai, my tea. Really, really, really good. The whole place, the rice was the best rice of the trip. And those guys told me that the meat was incredible. This is a place that everyone is queuing up. They earn the reputation and looks really in line with what everyone said. To Iraq. We met literally in this tattoo shop and he's actually a very good guitar player. He doesn't say that uh, he's good but he used to be part of a band. I just wanted to say this is the other side of Iraq as well, right? Because you guys when you watch the videos about Iraq or what you hear on, on TV, it's not this, right? You hear a different story but this is also Iraq for you to know. Is Iraq safe or not? It's getting there. Yeah. It's, it's, it's way better than before. Yeah. As you can tell. Yeah. Uh, it will need more time. People yeah. need to be more um, more familiar with the with the, with the uh, outside culture. Yeah. Because we have been like you know like uh, we have been caged for a while. Yeah. And now uh, people are now more open-minded. Yeah. And uh, they are refusing uh, the things that uh, they used to be influenced by, yeah. which is it's a good thing. My perspective, and I think you guys the same. Yeah. Right? Week in Iraq, like completely yeah. safe. Like, uh, obviously there's areas like everywhere in the world. Things are way better than before. So this is the other side of Iraq as well. We're in this tattoo shop. This is the underground. So we're gonna talk to him now and try to understand a little bit more about this business here. What's up guys, this is Inkman, your friendly neighborhood tattoo artist and welcome to Iraq. For the past eight years I've been doing this job. I have my own studio. How's life in Iraq? A bit safer lately in the past couple of years. Um, we've passed a lot of uh, war stuff like that. It's a bit calm, uh, calm now. The worst thing uh, where we suffer from is traffic jams maybe because it's <laughs> hell like driving from work and home it takes like an hour or two like that just um, and yeah overall uh, uh, lately the, the currency went uh, a little bit up and down uh, affected uh, everyone's business uh, but other than that it, it is a, a, a very uh, calm maybe uh, interesting place to live in this, this image about Iraq in Western countries that mm -hmm. it's one of the most dangerous countries in the world what would you say to people saying this I mean it's either we're playing on difficult uh, on, on like hard mode difficulty because you guys are just having it on easy mode but it's a livable place I mean uh, you can live here you can have your own tattoo studio you can have your job um, I'm already a, a crafty man I'm doing my car project I'm doing a whole car from from scratch uh, you can you can do whatever actually whatever you want maybe uh, with a bit, a bit of difficulties here and there but it is a very livable place I mean we, we had our days we had our rough days it's been uh, a, a war zone for, for a while so getting out of there is is kind of hard but we are actually uh, into uh, getting into a, a, a whole country a better country to hope so uh, it's gonna take a while maybe 10 to 20 years from now but it's uh, heading towards a safer uh, country to live in any other message you think uh, people need to know I mean there is actually one message that I always love to, to send to people is and it's it's uh, related to my business uh, never do your lover's name or, or uh, text or whatever never do personal tattoos uh, just go with whatever you see wild, you see crazy, you enjoy doing it, uh, you enjoy seeing it in your, on your body for, for a very long time. And yeah, choose wisely, take your time, and yeah, that's about it. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thanks. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. So before I go, you can see also in this tattoo shop, you see hard times, good times. Uh, these people in Iraq, they had very hard time in the past. But now, it's a better time. Now it's a good time. And I think for everyone watching the video now, it's a good time to visit Iraq. Don't wait for the official um, announcement or official media saying, now you can go. It's safe to travel. Just try, as always, get with local people, talk to them. Uh, and that's it, really. That's 
how you should do for every country really but anyway that's all I think it's been it's been a pleasure to be making videos different episodes here in Iraq but that's all for now thanks for watching and see you in the next one